Good morning, school. It's my pleasure to deliver this week's keynote, and I've chosen to speak to you about empathy, which is something I've been uh, thinking a lot about recently, particularly this year. The reason why I've chosen to speak to you about this is next week is actually M National Empathy Week. And some of you are going to be doing um, a project on this over the next couple of weeks in your GC lessons. I think empathy is a really important skill for us. In fact, some people, um, some, some leading sort of researchers this year have actually said that they believe empathy to be the number one most important skill uh, for young people going forward. It's probably a phrase that we've heard lots and we've been asked to consider lots. Um, so what I wanted to do today was just to stop and pause and think, what is it that we mean when we talk about empathy? Um, why is it important, particularly now? Um, why we, sh we might want to consider developing our empathy and, and get better at it and practice it? And, and finally, what are some very practical tips that might help us to be able to do that? Um, so an easy definition of empathy, this is one that I've taken out of the dictionary, the ability to understand and share the feelings of another person. Um, but it's a little bit more than that. The term empathy is used to describe a wide range of experiences. Emotion researchers generally define empathy as the ability to sense other people's emotions um, and couple this with the ability to imagine what someone else might be thinking or feeling in a given situation. Now, it goes without saying that the last year has been a really challenging year for everyone. So much has been written and said about the situation that we're in with COVID. Um, but I think it's really important to just pause and look within our own community about why it's really important that we try to be empathetic. Um, because by being empathetic, we can inform the way that we want to react to one another. If we think about students, we think about you guys, um, you've had a year Actually, if you include the protests longer than that, a year and a half of disrupted schooling. I can't imagine what that would have been like at your age. Uh, school was pretty straightforward. Um, when I was a younger, uh, you know, we, we went to school. Yes, it was complicated, but we didn't have to wear masks. We didn't have to uh, think about whether we could high five each other after a game of football or anything like that. School was pretty normal. Right now, it's important for us to remember that your normality has completely changed. You can't do the normal day-to-day -day thing. Sometimes you're not allowed into school, sometimes you are. Sport has been completely changed. The way you socialize has been really changed. Even the way you see each other day-to-day, -day, you're having to wear masks, which means that you can't see each other's smiles and, and, and facial expressions. It's really important that we pause and remember that. And when we think about your parents too, um, everything has changed for your parents. Your parents have got a number of things that are so important to them, but number one will be keeping you safe. And number two will be helping you to thrive and flourish in your education and, and, and so that you can go on and be adults into the into the world and make an impact. And both of these things have been really challenged during the COVID. How do they best keep you safe? And in the situation where school has been so disrupted, how, how can they help? What, what can they do? It's probably quite a helpless feeling that they have in many situations. And of course, your teachers. Your teachers are here at work um, and, and what they want more than anything is to educate you and, and to help you to become uh, great young adults. And at the moment, our whole way of teaching has been turned upside down. And in the same way for your parents and the teachers, haven't seen our families for a long time. Life as we know it is very challenging. All of these different emotions. So I think it's important that we, we consider everybody in our community and we try to put ourselves in each other's shoes. And by doing that, um, I think we've got the best opportunity of, of, of really working together as a cohesive community. Um, so why is empathy important? And, and I just wanted to pull together five quick reasons why I think you should be focusing on empathy and why we should make a conscious decision to be empathetic. First one is it builds a positive classroom culture. Every single one of you who's in a classroom um, I've got a different perspective and that includes the teacher and the different students. None of your lives are the same. Everybody's is different. If we can try to understand the situation that one another are going through, we can build a much better um, classroom culture and that is going to benefit us all in the long run. And the second reason that I want to give is it strengthens community. If we can be empathetic, we can understand each other, the, the whole community, parents, students, teachers, we can work together. And I also mean the wider community, not just the school community. The more we can be empathetic for those around us, the better community is going to be. 
This leads really nicely onto it prepares you to be leaders in your community. Some of the best student leaders that we've had of recent years have been really empathetic people. A lot of their work and their passions have started by getting out into the community and being inspired to help others. It's really helped define them as leaders and they have gone on to be leaders of the school. And I have absolutely no doubt that in their future success, they will go on to be leaders in the world. This is an interesting one. Being empathetic actually improves academic performance. There are loads of studies out there that can show why this is the case. And two, I just wanna highlight a couple that are really interesting. Um, in English and history, the more you can understand the characters in the book or the historical figures that you're talking about, if you can put yourself in their shoes, you can understand both sides of the story. And this is gonna help you to do better in your exams. Actually, recently, it's not just about written subjects like that. A study was released by the University of Cambridge just last week. And this study was in design technology and it did uh, two different schools, complete case study where it monitored their actual improvement in design technology. One school was given a project and, and no reason behind it. The second school was given the same project, but really uh, before they started, it started to delve into why this project was important and, and the community that was gonna help and the value that it's gonna bring to their life. And it was absolutely clear that the students who really stopped and think about that performed significantly better. Their academic performance was improved by stopping and making a conscious decision to be empathetic. This is a really interesting one. It will also improve your future job success. And there's a number of levels for this. Um, of course, on a human level, uh, when you're talking about working with your colleagues and if you're if you're a leader understanding the situations that they're going through you can be empathetic and that's a good thing but it's more than that if you're at the boardroom on the negotiating table and you can really put yourself in the shoes of the person across the table from you and you can start to think what they might be thinking and how they might want to move the conversation around then you've got a negotiating advantage the more you can be empathetic actually the better you can be at business so I just want to leave this um, with you for, for three quick thoughts of things that you could actually do, something that you can proactively do if you want to work on your empathy and make a conscious decision to try to be more empathetic. Um, the first one is to consider how you can get out into the Hong Kong community. And of course, in, a, in, the, in the real world, whatever that looked like, going out and physically getting involved in community work and learning service is a really, really great thing to do. And at the moment, of course, we know that we're not able to go and do things because of, of the COVID in the same way, but there's still organizations that you can get involved with. There's still lots of organizations that online, you can go and find out how you can get involved in community work and how you can support the Hong Kong community. Second of those reasons is um, ways that you can seek to improve your empathy is to debate. Um, and on one hand, debate clubs are really, really good. And, and if you've never been involved in a, a proper debate, I'd really encourage you to do that. And in a debate, to, an argument is put forward and you are given the side that you are gonna argue for. It may be the side that you actually believe in and it may not be, but you have to actively consider the arguments for the side that you are, not your personal beliefs. So debates are really, really good things. And that could be formal, or actually you could get involved with your friends and perhaps have some, some fun debates, pick a, a almost a nonsensical topic and argue both sides and see who can have the, the most convincing argument. One that I love to have with friends is whether there's such a thing as half a sandwich. And I can argue both sides all day long. Of course, there's half a sandwich. We take a sandwich, we cut it in half, you've got half a sandwich. The other side of me would argue that's just still a sandwich. And I think little arguments like that are really good ways to try and consider what the other person might be thinking and how they might build their case and to try and unpick it. And the third one is, is, is to actually do some conscious empathy mapping. Um, when I'm really trying to, to get to the bottom of a situation, if I've got a complicated situation with students or parents or staff, I try to use an empathy map like this one. And it just really helps me to um, lay out my thoughts. I try to think, what is the person um, hearing from other people around them? What are they seeing from other people around them? What are they choosing to say and do? And what might they be thinking and feeling as a result of that? And then I try to, to, to split it down into two things at the bottom, pain and gain. What are the negatives and what are the positives of the situation that we're in? And when I do this, it really helps me to understand how to deal with the situation. Now, you're probably not, as students, going to be involved in situations in the same way that I'm at work. 
but you could do this with um, with characters, for example, historical characters, or some of the characters that you read in a book, or even that you see in a TV series. Perhaps just pause and make a conscious decision to think, what are the things they're hearing? What are they seeing? What are they saying and doing? What might they be feeling? What are the pros and cons of this situation? It's a really, really good way to, to try and develop your empathy. And I do believe uh, that empathy is important. I would probably agree with the, those out there who are saying it is the most important skill, particularly at the moment. Our emotions are all over the place because of the difficult situation we're in. Um, I've tried to outline some of the reasons why I think this is important to you and some of the things that you could do, but I'd really encourage you to, to just have a think about empathy, why it's important. And, and maybe you are an empathetic person. Maybe this is important to you. Maybe it's not something you've yet given much thought to. And, and if so, I'd like to challenge you to see if you could um, try to be a little bit more empathetic and try and develop that skill. Um, that's all I've got to say on the topic. Wishing you all a, a great day. And if you did want to um, discuss this anymore, please do come and see me at any point. I'm always really happy to talk about this topic.